All right, this is a video of the Chapter 3 Multiple Choice for first semester. Recommend that you have your calculator and this document out in front of you as you watch and check your problems. Problem number one, which is closest to molar mass of potassium bromide? You need a periodic table, and potassium is about 40 on the periodic table, and bromine is about 80, so that means it's about 120. So 120 would be letter D. Potassium right here is 39. Bromine right here is 80. You add those two together, that's the molar mass. Number two, which is uh, closest to the number of moles of nitrogen molecules in 9.05 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of nitrogen gas N2. So it wants to know the number of moles. So we're going to go from molecules right here, two moles, one mole on the top, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd on the bottom. 10 to the 23 is canceled. 9 divided by 6 is about 1.5. So about 1.5 moles, which is letter C. Number 3, which is closest to the number of grams in 0.5 moles of carbon dioxide. So now we're given moles, and we got to find grams. Molar mass goes on the top. When you add up carbon dioxide on the periodic table, carbon is 12, oxygen is 16. You need to multiply that by 2, so it ends up being 44 grams in one mole, which is about 22 grams, which is letter A. Number 4, which is closest to the number of grams in 1.5 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of bromine. And it wants to know the number of grams now. So when you look on your periodic table, you're going to go from atoms to moles and then to grams. So a two-step problem. First step, in one mole, there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. And then we go from moles here to grams. So molar mass goes on the top. Moles go on the bottom. Molar mass of bromine is approximately 80. When you look on here, it's 79.9. So we'll have 1.5 divided by 6, which is about 1 fourth. The times 10 to the 23 is cancel. And 1 fourth of 80 is about 20 grams. And it says which is closest, so that's letter A. Number 5. I can determine or calculate the empirical formula, which is an empirical formula. Remember, that's the simplest whole number ratio, and letter B would be a 2 to 5 ratio. You couldn't make that simpler without a fraction. Number 6, substance with an empirical formula of CH has a molar mass of 52. So molar mass is equal to some number times the empirical formula mass. We want to find out what that number is and then multiply C1H1, C1H1 by that number. So it tells us that the molar mass is 52 grams per mole. The empirical formula is CH. And if you add up CH on the periodic table, carbon is 12 and hydrogen is 1. So that's uh, 13. So 13 times not some number x is equal to 52. So 52 divided by 13 gives us 4. So that means we need to multiply C1H1 by 4. And so that ends up being C4H4, which is letter E. Number 7 which is closest to the percentage by mass of potassium in potassium hydrogen carbonate. So the first thing you need to do is add up the whole thing because part divided by whole times 100 gives you your percentage composition of your part that you're interested in. And we're interested in potassium. 
So potassium on the periodic table is 39. Divided by the whole thing, so 39 plus 1 is 40, plus carbon is 12, plus oxygen is 16 times 3. So if we do that together, that's 48, plus 12 is 60, plus 40 is 100. So it would be 39 divided by 100 times 100% is 39%. So it says which is closest, well that would be letter C. That was number seven. Now number eight. A certain compound contains 60% oxygen, 5% hydrogen, and 35% nitrogen. The simplest formula, the simplest formula is also known as the empirical formula, is, and we need to figure that out. So step number one is to assume a 100 gram sample. Steps are given to us right here. Assume a 100 gram sample, then those convert to grams. Divide by the molar mass to determine the number of moles in each element. So grams here, moles here. Oxygen is 16, hydrogen is 1, nitrogen is 14, 5 moles of hydrogen. 60 divided by 16 is 3.75. 35 divided by 14 is 2.5. Find the smallest and divide by the smallest. That's our last step. If you're following along with the steps back here, calculate the mole ratio right here. So divide by 2.5. This ends up being 1. This is 2. And 3.75 divided by 2.5 is 1 and a half. And so our ratio would be nitrogen 1, hydrogen 2, oxygen 1.5. Obviously, you can't have 1.5, so we'll take 1.5 atoms. So we'll take and we'll multiply the whole thing by 2, and then we get N2H4O3. And looking on here, N2H4O3 is letter D. Number 9. What is the total number of atoms in 3 moles of ammonium per bromate? And the formula is given to us right here. And it wants to know the total number of atoms. So first we have to go from moles to molecules. And then we'll figure out how many atoms there are inside that number of molecules. So 6.02 over 1. Our moles cancel. 3 times 6 is 18, so 18 times 10 to the 23. Okay, and this is the number of molecules. We'll put molecule in a position where it's going to cancel and we'll put atom as our new set of units. And inside of this molecule right here, there's one nitrogen atom, there's four hydrogen atoms, there's one bromine atom, and there are four oxygen atoms. So that's four plus four plus one plus one, or ten. There's ten atoms in one molecule. Where did I get that? I added up the total number of atoms inside that molecule. So now we have 18 times 10 to the 24th, or 1.8 times 10 to the 25th. Oh, I'm not sure why I started with 3 right here, because it does say 0.5 moles right here. I don't know where I got that 3. Maybe I got the 3 from over here. Let's go back and fix that. 0.5 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd would make it be th 3 times 10 to the 23rd. Now times 10 would be uh, 30 times, whoops, let me just go away with these right here. 3 times 10 to the 23rd um, times 10 would be 3 times 10 to the 24th, and that would be this guy right here, letter D. 
my apologies. I have no idea where that three came from. I must just not be paying attention. And maybe I got a three from down here, but it says 0.5 moles. She should have started with 0.5 moles. One more, then we'll take a break and come back with a new video. Number 10 says, use the following equation to assist in answering the next three questions. If there's one mole of each reactant, which is the limiting reagent? So if I have one mole of A, one mole of B, and one mole of C, how do I determine which one is going to be the limiter? Well, if you remember the stoichiometry steps, step two and a half helps you determine the limiter, and you need to divide by the coefficient to determine the limiter. And since I already have moles right here, it tells me that I have one mole of each, I would simply divide this by three, this by one, and this by five. And I would ask which is going to be the smallest. And of course, one-fifth is the smallest, so C would be my limiter. We'll finish this problem. If 10 moles of C react with an excess of A and B, how many moles of products of D and E respectively are produced? So they want us to do two stoichiometry problems here. We do need the balanced chemical equation. 3A plus B plus 5C goes to 2D plus E. So put a multiply sign, put a line, put C in a position where it's going to cancel, put C in a position where it's going to cancel. We're already in moles. We're told that there is an excess of A and B, so my limiter is C, so I don't have to do part two and a half. I have to go right here to the mole-to-mole -mole ratio. And so it wants to know how much D is going to be produced and how much E is going to be produced. So two different problems. 2D for every 5C, 1E for every 5C. So 10 divided by 2 is 2. 2 times 2 is uh, 4. So 4 Ds would be produced. 10 divided by 5 is 2 times 1 is 2. 2 Es would be produced. So looking in order, D and E, D would be 4 and E would be 2. So that would be letter C. And last one, using this equation right here that they gave us on the page before, says 2 moles of B react with an excess of A and C. If the reaction produces a 50% yield of E, what is the actual yield of E? Um, well, first we start with 2 moles of B, because that's what they tell us, and there's an excess of A and C, so we're already in moles, and we have the balanced equation. We don't have to worry about the limiter, because they tell us there's an excess of A and C. So we need a mole ratio of B to E, because that's the thing we want to know the um, theoretical yield of. And so E has a 1 in front of it. B has a 1 in front of it from the balanced chemical equation. That's where I get my mole to mole ratio. So I should produce 2 moles of E. This is what I should produce. Now, it tells me there's a 50% yield. So I'm actually only going to produce half of this, or 50% of it. And so 50% of 2 is 1. So I will produce C, 1 mole of E. Back with the second video for the rest of the practice test.